Um, so, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Maddie Rogers from Perian Press, who is a publishing assistant there. Um, and she is also, very importantly, the host of uh, the Borderless Book Club. And it's all her hard work that has made it possible. Um, so I welcome Maddie. Hi, thanks so much for having me, Caitlin. <laughs> Not at all, not at all. So do you want to tell us all a little bit about Perry and Press? Um, oh, Pyrene, Pyrene. Oh, I did that for so long. Oh no, Ricky, I'm, I'm unprofessional okay. already. It, it's fine. Um, well, the first thing about Pyrene Press is that it has a name that is both difficult to spell and pronounce. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not the only one who has trouble with it. Um, yeah, so Pyrene, um, we're like a, a very small independent publishing house and um, we specialize in contemporary European novellas. So all of our books, um, the kind of the, the concept of it is that you can read one of our books in the same time that it takes to watch a film. So they're all short, um, sort of like you can read it in one sitting kind of thing. And we publish three books a year, most years, um, in like a series with a, the a, um, unifying theme. Um, and we've published from I think 15 different European languages now, so we don't have we don't have like a specific focus. Um, but yeah, we try and we try and include lots of different literatures and cultures in our editorial. So yeah, um, this year we've got an Italian one, Snow Dog Foot, which was um, we did in our book club last time. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like the Snow Dog Foot is like the first book that I worked on, so it's like one of my one of my favourites. Um, and then the one we've just had out to our subscribers last month, last month, this month, um, very recently, and will be out for general release in June is Ankoms, which is Norwegian. And then the third one in our series this year is Georgian, the Pearfield. Yeah. So Ooh, we... that answers that answers a question I was about to have because I my impression was is mostly European, but a little bit wider, is it? Yeah, I think we've um, we've done almost exclusively European, but it's not like that's our it's not like it's a restriction on on the books that we choose to publish. So we've published a Libyan novel before, and um, as I say, this Georgian one, and then next year we've got a Chilean one coming up. Um, so we're trying to branch out a little bit from from Europe. Yeah, um, but as I say, most most of our books are European. And um, so what was your experience like working on Snow Dog Foot? Um, I, I, I love Snow Dog Foot. Um, so yeah, it was, I, I actually only joined Pyrene in December last year, so quite recently. And it was just going, I remember it, was, it had just gone out to subscribers when I joined. Um, so I sort of did the PR for it as it was like um, being released and sort of did all the social media and stuff. So that was really fun because it's, I mean, it's a book that I really enjoy, so it's very easy to to promote it. Um, and it, I also, it was also, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> it was also really interesting because, um, as we discussed in our book club meeting, um, it was translated by Jay Ockenden, who was the winner of the first Pyrene Stevens translation prize. Which for me, because I also, I'm I haven't done any professional translation, but I have. I just did finish an MA in translation studies. Like, um, I. I come into it with the perspective of the translator as well. So for me, it was really interesting to see this scheme that was so perfect for the debut translators to support people who hadn't done literary translation before. So um, yeah, I was really pleased to be able to work on on that, that publication. Yeah, I was I was quite like um, impressed when I found out that it was her first, but their first book that they've ever translated. Like it's. It's so good. I yeah, really, 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 really good job on it. It's it's very impressive. Yeah, I really love pro style. So, how did you come to um, set up the Borderless Book Club? Um, because I actually found out about it through um either Charco or Tilted Access, like I was on one of their um mailing lists. Um, so how did it come about? Yeah. So with that, it was it was started in March, and it was I think it was like the week that lockdown was either had just been announced or was really just about to be announced like we we knew this was happening like we were all going to have to stay inside like it, we knew it was the last week we were going to be in the office for a while um and we were just thinking in the office so uh, as i said pyrene is very small um that day in the office there was me and stella who's the the manager of pyrene and they say it's just the two of us and then there's also micah zirvogel who's the founding publisher of pyrene she's a bit um, more hands-off these days but she was because she was living in Lebanon and working in a refugee camp and 
but then she had to come back because of coronavirus so we kind of knew right this is a bit of a strange situation so she was also in the office and she was talking about how with um I think with her mother and her children they were doing like a family zoom book club and she was like oh this is such a nice idea that we all get together on zoom and we discuss this book and she, she was saying to us you know you should really find some sort of like social media engagement that you can do with our readers during this time like this would be a good time to think of something a bit creative so we were thinking and we were saying well the book club thing sounds really nice maybe we could do a Pyrene book club um and you know talk talk about our books with our readers I think it was Stella who said well we could get some other presses involved like we could re reach out to some other presses and but then she said I don't I'm I'm quite busy so Maddie can you can you do this like do you do you think you could look into this and I was like yeah let's do it so I got in touch with um with the other five presses that we had the initial sort of run with so Charco, Tilted Axis, Nordisk, Istros and Comma um I emailed them all just called them all up and said what do you think about this idea and they were like yeah, it sounds it sounds good. We'd like to be we'd like to be involved. So we sort of got the got the group together and put our first meeting together really quickly. I, I mean, really quickly. Like we got we got it organised in about five days, which is kind of crazy actually when you think about it. Um, and yeah, I, I emailed Jamie Bullock, the translator of the Muscle Fleece, and said because that wasn't actually necessarily the original um, sort of gimmick if gimmick's the right word that we were going for, gimmick isn't the right word, but you know, like the sort of unique selling point of having the translators involved in the discussion wasn't actually really the focus of the first meetings we had about it. It was more just like, we should talk about our books and get our readers involved. Um, it wasn't until I'd kind of thought about how I was gonna host the first meeting and we'd said, cause we've worked with Jamie a lot. He's translated lots of our books um, and he's, as you, as you will know, if you've seen or listened to the first meeting of, um, of the book club, he's very um, eloquent and a really great guest to have. So they said, why don't you get Jamie involved? So I did, and then that went so well that I thought, well, we should really be including the translators because this is actually a great opportunity to, um, yeah, to have those discussions with the translators. So that's basically how it happened. That, that's really interesting to hear the sort of like behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that Muscle Feast and Snow Dog Fit are the two, probably those two and um, Where the Wild Ladies Are are the ones that I've been like recommending and I just lent Muscle Feast um, to a friend the other day and she was like this is the best book I've ever read. Um, oh, so wow. I think there's something <laughs> really really <laughs> special going on there. Oh thank um, you. Yeah and um, so uh, yesterday's book club was about arid dreams um, mm -hmm. and I was quite curious as to um, what your opinion of arid dreams was um, and like your sort of behind the scenes if you got to like be sort of chatting about it in one of the breakout rooms what you would say um, because my breakout room was quite interesting um, I really really loved the book and everyone generally had enjoyed reading it but the sort of reaction to how like sometimes difficult the um, male characters can be to read actually I think created quite a lot of like resistance and like which I really feel like some people just find it so unpleasant to read yeah. that it was turning them off slightly um so I was wondering what you thought about our dreams well um yeah that's it's really interesting of you to ask me because I feel like actually most of the time in the book club I try not to offer too much of my own opinions and I try and it's something that I've had to think about quite a lot it's how much I want to put in my own thoughts and um, I, I think I try and respond to to what's being said but I try not to take over too much with my own ideas um, but this thing of yeah where when we have these books which have these difficult men in them and these yeah these narratives that show these unpleasant male characters and those kinds of narratives always seem to be the ones that do cause the most um, yeah, it's the word, the most sort of tension and conflict of, of opinion. Um, and we, we saw it with, with our Nordisk book, Restless, that was the one that, you know, had, had this really quite divisive male narrator and there was a lot of talk about unpleasant male characters and stuff. And I think, I don't think it's maybe wise to compare the, the, these two authors necessarily but it is interesting to see how this happens and with Arid Dreams I just thought that and I think I did say this yesterday that a lot of these 
male characters are not presented in a sympathetic way at all and they come across as very pathetic and um yeah I mean when I read it I didn't think that I was put off by that at all actually I thought there was a lot of humor in the way that these men were presented like um and the way that their sort of ideas and their pride about their masculinity was sort of exposed as being quite ridiculous you know there's that short one with um the letter from the inmate and he's like you must find this woman and tell her this really important thing it's so important that you find her and tell her that the story I told her about not about my penis being chopped off by my wife was a lie like imagine you were about to be executed and that's the, your top of your priorities I thought it was really funny I thought it was hilarious no. um, so yeah I mean I I didn't find that that put me off the book at all um no I really enjoyed it actually um I enjoyed a lot actually that they the, the stories were quite different um, that I mean sometimes people with a short story would want like to feel like they were connected or like there was some kind of cohesive style to them and I didn't really feel that with our dreams I felt like it was kind of uh, maybe a little disjointed but I, I liked that about it I liked that the styles differed and that you never knew what you were gonna get um, I think I heard some, I think it might be you actually, was, uh, described it as like tie short stories that throw curveballs at you. Um, and yeah, that's absolutely how it felt. Like you, you didn't know if it was going to be funny, if it was going to be scary, um, if it was going to be really sort of like poetic and lovely. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it, funnily enough, I think it made so much sense when um, it came out last night that the stories were taken from different collections, that they hadn't originally been written as one chunk. They were like, some of them were as old as 1995, so I thought that was really um, relevant. And also, um, to the sort of Nordisk, I was thinking about the Nordisk book, I had came on with Our Dreams, I loved it. With the Nordisk one, I did not. I think it's quite interesting to think about the two, um, that there was something in the Nordisk one um, called Restless by Kenneth Moe that I couldn't get behind the narrator, but there was something in Our Dreams um, that I thought was very valuable. Yeah. I think the, the interesting thing with Restless is that um, I probably had a similar feeling to it when I read it, that I, I didn't necessarily enjoy the experience of reading it and I felt yeah I didn't like the character I didn't really like the, sort of the stuff that he was saying but that said it's the one that I've thought about the most afterwards like I've spent so much time thinking about that book and um, actually the more I think about it the more I think that it is actually it's very clever and how it does that I think that it is the intention is that you're not supposed to, to like it and it, it has this whole thing running through it about literature and trying to find something that will cure you of literature and um, that book really made me think about what I want to get from the reading experience and what the point of the reading experience is um, and whether you know a book what 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 makes us decide to read anything and what makes a book worth reading um, so it actually made me think about my own reading um habits a lot more than probably any of the others have so yeah it's been it was an interesting one definitely yeah definitely i really i really like everything you just said and i definitely think that um all of that can be gained from the book i guess my feeling when reading it was would a woman writing about or especially a, like a, a woman or person of color writing about the same sort of experience and feelings of basically teenage sexuality and teenage angst would they get the chance I think I maybe would have liked it more if like it was exactly the same book um but I don't know there were elements of sexism you couldn't just directly do yeah. um I feel like other people maybe wouldn't get to write that book yeah and that's something we talked about and we said you know would a woman get the space to write this book and I think I said I don't think a woman would write this book <laughs> so <laughs> You know, yeah, it's like a hard, it's a hard question really. Um, but I think, I think you can talk about like the space that writers are afforded to do, to, you know, to explore certain themes, but that's not necessarily so pertinent to the book itself, if that makes sense. Like you can talk about why this book was published and not another book, but that's a different, that's probably a different discussion to yeah. what is the merit of this book if that makes sense absolutely very wisely put um so i have some of the next books coming up 
right here. Sliding. <laughs> um, are there any in particular that you're looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to all of them, and I, I say that like without any, you know, attempt at avoiding the question. Like I genuinely um, do look forward to every single one. And actually, part of the thing that's been so great for me doing this is that I get to read all these books, and that um, I'm often in the position of reading a book that I that comes from a language or a culture that I've never explored before, and that is great for me. Like it was true yesterday with the Thai book. Like I've never read anything from Thailand before. I'd never read anything from Sudan before. And we did 13 months of sunrise. Like it's really broadening my own horizons. Um, and I really enjoy that about it. And I think it's also quite good for me as the host to have that position as well, because I don't, um, I was actually saying this to me yesterday before we began the conversation of like, I do sometimes ask questions that are maybe a bit basic or like, you know, perhaps don't go as deep as they could, but that's because I'm, I'm in this position, which is the same as a lot of, of our readers that, you know, we don't know anything about this culture or this literature. So it's quite good, I think, for me to, to be in that, in that position. So yeah, I mean, I have read, I actually have um, Summer of Reckoning right next to me because I'm reading it at the moment. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this one currently, but I'm, I couldn't pick, I couldn't just pick one out because I do look forward to all of them and they're all very different, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm particularly looking forward to the um, Palestinian plus 100. I think I would have bought this one anyway, even if it hadn't been. For those of you who don't know, it's um, uh, 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 Nakba plus 100 years. So it's a set of Palestinian short stories that aren't to do with the current situation in Palestine. So uh, that was that looks really exciting yeah I am looking forward to that one and I have to I have to say like if yeah I probably do mostly look forward to the ones that are outside of my previous sort of knowledge or experience and that's definitely true of the Palestine one um I'm trying to I'm trying to think I'm trying to go through the ones that we've got coming up so yeah that um I'm looking forward to Holiday Heart as well, the next one that we've got. Um, oh, that one hasn't arrived yet, I know, I'm so excited. It hasn't arrived for me yet either. Um, Chaka were kind enough to send me fish soup, which I've slightly dabbled in. Um, I haven't fully, I haven't, don't think I've fully read any of the next ones that are coming up, unfortunately. Um, it is bit, it is like quite a lot for me of like reading one after the other. So, um, and I have the same issue actually as everybody else. Everyone, everyone emails me on a weekly basis saying, I haven't got the book yet. And sometimes I'm like, me neither. <laughs> uh, we're, we're all at the mercy of, of Royal Mail currently. So um, yeah, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the, all of the ones that we've got coming up. Me too, me too. Um, thank you so much, Maddie. It was really, really lovely to speak to you. And everybody come check her out, check out Pyrene Press and please come join the Borderless Book Club. Um, can vouch it's really really enjoyable <laughs> thank you <Caitlin. laughs>